Good morning guys, what is happening, what is going on, what is good, welcome back to another video. Guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about the 5 ways you can make your videos look a lot more cinematic. So, let's get started and keep this video short. Number 1, filming in 24 frames per second. Guys, please do not film 30 frames, 50 frames, 60 frames per second unless you are doing slow motion, okay? Slow motion, yes, higher frames. If you are shooting normal, like just a normal video, you know, like a dialogue video, like a dialogue shot, or like just anything that isn't supposed to be slow motion, do not film in a high frame rate. 24 frames per second if you are in the US and 25 frames per second if you are in the UK. What you'll find when you're shooting in a high frame rate for non-slow motion shots is that it just looks, it looks a bit too much, okay? That's probably the best way to describe it. It looks too much, it looks too smooth, it looks too fake, it looks too, I don't know, as if it was like meant to be some kind of animation or a cartoon. Let me be honest with you, when I first bought a camera and I started getting into videos, I shot everything at 60 frames per second. Looking back at the videos, they look awful. They just look so strange and yes, it gave me the ability to always be able to slow uh, Im uh, footage down if I wanted to, but at the same time, having everything at 60 frames per second, it just looks awful. So what I do now is, Everything that I don't want slow motion in, I shoot at 24 frames per second, and then whatever I want in slow motion, I'll just switch it real quick to 60 frames per second, uh, or even higher. My GH5 has the ability to just quickly change it, man. It's uh, very handy. So yeah, normal shots, 24, slow motion stuff, as high as you want. Number two, haze. Haze, 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 haze. If you are shooting a video indoors, okay, try and get yourself a haze machine. Now you can get some on Amazon for like super cheap. They're really small, not the most reliable because after like a few uses, they will just stop working. Um, I actually purchased two and after like a few uses, I think the first one lasted for like four uses and then the second one after the, after the second use, it just stopped working. But I do recommend getting a haze machine or even renting one out. Um, it just adds a lot of atmosphere to your videos, especially if you're indoors and you have lighting. The lights will just honestly like, it will really just like cover up the entire room. It will look so cinematic. If you have noticed on Netflix, every single one of their TV shows or their movies, there is haze in every single shot. Dude, I remember watching this movie and they were in a library and there was just like all this haze. And I was like, why is there haze in a bloody library, when are you ever gonna go, go into a library and find the place looking hazy? That's never gonna happen, but it looks gorgeous, beautiful in the videos. And also like you can kind of manipulate the lights and make the lights look as if it's like some kind of like light show because of that haze. For example, if um, you know, if you're in a room and then there's like a window and then you have like, like you kind of like customize that window. So you'll put like wood panel, wood strips on the window, leaving slight gaps, have some haze in there, and then you'll see like this really nice, just like like light haze kind of like hitting down. You can do a lot by introducing haze. It just looks cinematic, it looks nice, and yeah, haze, very cinematic. Number three, Promist filter. Well, more specifically, this is actually a dream effects filter by a company called Tropicolor. But yeah, Promist filters are fantastic. You should have this on your camera lens at all times, your video camera lens at all times. These things do make your image just go from like super digital to just more cinematic, softens the image. It blows out the highlights. It lifts the contrast up a little bit as well. So your images are not super like, you know, super, super contrasty. I remember having so much trouble with my image, just images just looking so sharp, so digital. Every time I'd go to the cinema, I would be in awe of how soft the, the, um, the images were and how like, you know, like the highlights would just blow out. Let's say for example, if you have like a person here and then the sun is there and then you just have like this, this like, Th these blooms just kind of like spilling over the face and I love that so much. When I figured out that that was what a Promise filter does, instantly got one and oh my God, I have, I have never, this is the first time I've taken it off of my camera actually. It is, I'm so addicted to it. I always have it on me at all times. It also has like a cool effect for your pictures as well. Every once in a while, I don't like to always use it, but every once in a while it's nice to do a little something different. But 
definitely with these. Also, what I noticed with the uh, Promis filter is when you're shooting at nighttime and you have lights, it blows out the lights. So let's say for example, in fact, yesterday I did a video where we were uh, we were in like a street and you had these like street lights. Now the camera was facing the street lights. Instead of having just like a round kind of like, you know, direct light from that uh, street light, it kind of like looked like a bulb. Really cool. So Promis filter number three makes your videos a lot more cinematic. Number four. Forgot what was number four, hold on a second. <laughs> I remember now, hold on. This is a bit overkill, but it'll prove my point. Hand held filming. I beg of you guys, try and ditch your stabilizer and try and perfect the art of filming hand held. There's nothing more robotic than having like a crane and using it to film every single shot of your video. It's so static, it's so robotic. There's no energy in there. There's no human in there. There's no personality or character in your shots when everything is just so like static. There is a lot, I remember when I first bought my crane, used it twice, stopped using it again. There's, it's just, I have, I felt like I didn't have enough control with the crane. It would like turn left and right when I really didn't want it to. And it was just so, so annoying. I remember seeing movies where DPs would embrace handheld sh like movements, a bit of shakiness as well. And I was like, man, if they're doing that, maybe I should do that as well. Cause I always used to fear my, my, my shots being like, you know, there would be too much movement or too much shake. And then I was like, man, I remember watching the Peanut Butter Falcon and there was so much shake in that, but it just looked really, really good. So I was like, maybe I should do that as well. So I ended up practicing handheld. What I do recommend is, you know, not going crazy like this, but getting like a top handle, putting that on your cage, on your camera, because a top handle will help lessen the, you know, like the, that kind of shake, you know, you're holding it like that instead of on the camera directly. Hold it up here and it's just going to give like a nice like a nice flowy movement to your camera and it'll just make it more cinematic so definitely try and ditch the crane as much as you can and just try and practice handheld filmmaking it yeah i feel like it'll just take your shots up a notch and make it, them a lot more cinematic number five. Oh oh yes hold on a second again i should have been more ready for this video Buyakasha. guys try and get yourself a really good prime lens that can open the hell up, okay? There is nothing more gorgeous than the background just being super, super, super blurry while your, while your subject is just super in focus, okay? The blurrier the background, the more cinematic it's gonna be. I guess to an extent, obviously you don't want it to open up f1.4. Actually, no, you definitely do wanna do that. Um, this here is a 35 millimeter f1.4 lens. I normally film this uh, on a 1.8 just because I find with 1.4 it's hard for me to focus. Uh, just a slight movement and everything's gonna go out of focus. Where f1.8 f1 and f2, it's like that perfect medium, you know what I mean? Where the background is still super blurry. My image, my subject is super in focus and I don't have too much trouble with like, if I do a bit of movement, you know, they won't really go too out of focus, but yeah. Watch any movie. These guys are shooting on like prime lenses that are like f1.4, f1.8, f2.8, f2.0, and the background is just so blurry. The subject is in focus. It just looks so cinematic. And yes, a lot of people are gonna hate me for this, but adding those cinematic black bars to your images and posts, um, it just it just makes it even more cinematic. I really don't like watching music videos on YouTube where like the image is like this. It's just like a strip. Uh, I don't know, it's just so annoying for me. I like a 16 by nine with like, you know, the cinematic crop bars on it. Looks very cinematic. So yeah, number five, get yourself just one good prime lens, f1.4, f1.8, and just shoot with that baby super open. I would advise getting an ND filter as well, because if you're shooting on a sunny day at f1.4 and your ISO, you know, you'll get it down, but you know, you wanna keep your shutter speed double the frame rate, it's still gonna be very bright. So get yourself an ND filter so you can darken it without having to mess around with the f-stop. So that is my five tips, guys, for making your shots look a lot more cinematic than they already are. Um, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. My presets for my photos are linked in the description box as well. Go check them out, purchase them if you want to. 
I will see you guys in the next one. Enjoy.